Hey everyone, welcome back to the Ace of Spades University channel. Today I want to discuss Trevor Noah and his departure from The Daily Show. So he began The Daily Show as a guest correspondent and then officially took over in 2015 when Jon Stewart left. And I love his bright, witty satire. His commentary is very fresh. He has incorporated new things into the show, like a green screen where he brings on different impressions. And I really enjoyed his take on things and the other correspondents as well that are on the show. I love listening to Roy Wood Jr., who is a contender to take over for Trevor once he leaves. I hope that he does. But there's other commentators. Dulce Sloan is hilarious. Desi Lydic. Um, they both focus on women's issues and you have Michael Costa who does like the finance report and he has a very <laughs> kind of uh, rural America commentary and uh, middle America point of view to a lot of things. Ronnie Chang, he's a Chinese correspondent and uh, I love listening to him as well. He has different views and, and insights from an international perspective. Then we have Jordan Klepper, who actually goes around. He's in the field a lot of times, and he gets commentary from the Trump supporters. And I worry about his, his safety a lot of times. I feel like he was there on the ground January 6th, and he's been out talking with people a lot of times, and they are really angry and uh trevor he did a, an interview on 60 minutes where he was discussing how the experience the racism that he's experienced in the u.s and mind you he grew up in south african apartheid okay but he said that there's a lot of angry americans and that it, it differs so greatly and I thought that that was really insightful and I forget the the older lady that he that was the interviewer but when he said that she was like oof you know that's harsh and in my mind I'm thinking but it's the truth and that's one thing I really like about Trevor is that he tells the truth regardless of how people you know take that or and it's never it's never really malicious i don't think that he tells the truth in a way that is brutal i feel like he tries to say things in love and a lot of times especially here in the u.s a lot of things are sugar-coated and even right now something that's trending on twitter that i feel like is relevant to this video, a lot of people are just now finding out about the true meaning of the Green Book, which was a Black travel uh, safety guide or manual that was used in the Jim Crow South to communicate safe places that Black folks could stop while they were traveling. You couldn't stop at every gas station or restaurant without fearing for your life. So they created a book, uh, a literal manual for our safety. And a lot of people just were completely ignorant of it until last night when it was a question on Jeopardy. And I really feel like that encapsulates the American experience. So much of our history is either whitewashed or just unknown. A lot of people are ignorant to it, and that's by design. But it's it was really nice to have Trevor come in from South Africa and give a fresh new perspective that he didn't spend his formative years in the US. And I feel like a lot of the world knows even more so about American history and current events than we do as Americans. But 
Moving on, he gave a brilliant commentary at the White House Correspondents' Dinner during his seven years as, uh, as the host of The Daily Show. And I thought that that was really insightful as well as a very fine line. He said that he has to, or he, that he had to walk because on one hand, a lot of people are saying, oh, you know, it's okay to joke around. But to be honest, especially in Washington, D.C., when you're dealing with such powerful people, they're very thin-skinned from Joe Biden on down. But one thing that he did incorporate that I thought was brilliant was that despite all of American flaws, we do have freedom of speech that is protected by the Constitution. We do have freedom of the press, which is what is celebrated at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. And so just that First Amendment alone has inspired so many de democracies across the globe. And it, it, uh, it provides protections for making fun of the, the most you know, powerful, one of the most powerful men in the world, which is the president of the United States. And a lot of countries don't have that. So the fact that he brought that up, again, just that outside perspective sheds new, new eyes and it gives new light to American ideologies and freedoms that he didn't experience in South Africa. There is no freedom of speech and a lot of their, a lot of their movements, their actions, their speech, their um, everyday living and lives were heavily policed and monitored. So I wanted to, again, thank him for bringing that out because that was I feel like a brilliant observation that a lot of Americans just take for granted myself included, we take a lot of things for granted. So seven years, he, he said he feels like that's the a time of completion, which I agree. Um, that's rooted in um, biblical theology. It's seven year span is a time of, of completion. And I really hope that Robert Jr., he's a contender, he's a, a current correspondent on The Daily Show, and I really hope that he takes over for him. And uh, the other correspondents are hilarious. Dulce Sloan, Desi Lydic, Ronnie Chang, everybody on there is great. He has started a new relationship from what the media has conveyed to us with Dua Lipa, and they were in New York after dinner, spotted together. So I commend Trevor for moving on and living life on his own terms. I feel like just the time surviving a global pandemic that history has shown happens what once in a you know century. The last global pandemic that we had was the Spanish flu in 1918 and then the roaring 20s happened because people were so happy to be around each other again so i completely get it love your family um you know hug those around you life is short and as human beings we really are interconnected and we need each other he said that he misses stand-up comedy and traveling and uh and I, I completely agree. I feel like I definitely want to get out and travel more. I need to renew my passport, which one of the great things about the Build Back Better plan that's going to be instituted uh, soon is our we can renew our passports online. So I'm excited about that. Hopefully that'll expedite the process a little bit. But um, yeah. I'm really enjoying learning more about YouTube and content creation and just the autonomy that it provides. So thank you so much for tuning in to the channel. Please subscribe and like if you haven't already. And big ups to Trevor Noah. I cannot wait to see what's in the store for the future. On the left is a picture of him when he's younger and his mother, Patricia Noah. He's going to turn his book, Born a Crime, into a movie starring Lupita Nyong'o. So I'm really excited about seeing that because I read the book, you guys, and it's phenomenal. If you haven't read it, please read it.
it's stayed on the New York bestsellers list for an extremely long time. And I feel like he definitely earned it. It's funny. It's insightful, passionate, and uh, it's a great, it's a great story. He's a great storyteller and I cannot wait to see what is in store for him. So you guys take care. I hope that you got a little bit of more insight into what's going on with Trevor Noah as he leaves to do better things upward and onward. And I wish that for every single one of you, reevaluate and prioritize the most important things and people in your life and live it to the fullest. Take care, you guys. Bye.